Hello, welcome. I'm Darren Bell. I'm going to be walking you through the Chapter 8 help video. So in this video, we are going to be talking about petty cash and how that actually occurs and how we keep track of it and reconcile petty cash. We're going to talk about the bank reconciliation as well and uh, also the adjusting entries that come out of the bank reconciliation. So to begin with, let's talk about petty cash. Petty cash is basically it's cash that we've taken and we've set aside in a separate drawer or bag or box or whatever that we can lock up and keep secure. And that petty cash is going to be used for smaller expenditures uh, that we need cash on hand at the moment. So this is going to be our petty cash problem set that we're going to walk through. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to establish a petty cash fund of $350. We want $350 cash on hand. And so that's going to be right there. That's $350. And so usually what, what happens is um, one thing you don't want to do. So you do not want to send your employee down to the bank and just say, we'll go and withdraw cash from the bank and bring it back here. Uh, we don't like employees going down and just being able to withdraw cash from our bank account. Not, not good practice. So the best practice is to actually cut a check, have to go through the uh, system and be approved, right? The check is to petty cash and the employee then takes that down to the bank and cashes the check at the bank gets the cash and brings it back and puts it into the petty cash uh, drawer, box, or bag, or whatever they're going to use. Okay, so that's what happens. So our main cash account is going to be that checking account. For most businesses, it's a checking account is really what the main cash account is. And so let's go ahead and uh, write this down. So we're creating the petty cash fund. That is where the cash is going to, is into this petty cash. So we're going to go ahead and Put that right here as our debit petty cash for $350, right? And then where's that coming from? Well, that's going to come from our main cash account. We'll just call it cash for now. That's what we call it in this, in this class. Uh, in real life, for both, most businesses, that cash account is actually, uh, looks something like this. It's going to say maybe like Wells Fargo, there we go. Uh, checking account number, you know, one, two, three, or whatever, right? Whatever the account number is related to that. So that's what it's going to look like more in real life. But for us, we're just going to say cash, right? That's our main cash account. And that will be our credit. So the cash is coming out of here and going in there. That's how um, assets work. Debit is an increase. Credit is a decrease. Okay, so now that we've got it on hand, we can now use it to do things, right? We can pay things with it. And so that's what this, all the rest of this data is going to be all the way from December 5th, all the way down through the 28th. And so we're going to have items that we're going to be using uh, the cash for. So as we use the cash, what that's usually going to look like, we have a uh, log or uh, in the box, we're going to keep our receipts in there, right? We've got to keep record of what we spend cash on. Then at the end of the month, we're going to kind of reconcile this. So this is kind of the reconciliation or the or the the payment report that we're going to create at the end of the month. And so with each one of these, we're going to have items like, for example, here um, a paper for our copier, right? That's going to be maybe uh, the supplies expense down here, right? So we're going to have our supplies expense for our copier paper. Uh, paper here and so we're going to put the amount in here 1575 and then the date goes here right so we're going to put our date over here and so that's going to be kind of the format that we're going to that we're going to use as we fill these out a couple of important things to note when we so we see here we have merchandise inventory as one of our items right so the merchandise inventory is going to be used for when we pay for inventory items that we receive. So, for example, um, we're going to have this item right here, right? So that right there is an inventory item. That will go to merchandise inventory. 
So that's kind of one of the things to keep an eye out for as well. And then once you get all of these done, we're, we're gonna sum them up and down here, there will be a total down at the bottom right. And so that's gonna be, and, and that'll show us uh, what we used, right? So this is gonna be what we used. And so um, then the, the main idea is this, right? So we've got our $350, that's our beginning balance. That's our beginning balance minus this item, the, whatever our total is there, minus that total, right? What we used, and that should uh, tell us what the ending balance is. Okay, if that ending balance, here's a number right up here. Twenty-four seventy-one is my number. Yours might be different in your problem set that you have. That's what I have in the end. So if this number, the ending number that you have here is not 2471, then you need to find the difference. So you need to take your 2471 and find the difference here, right? So if there is any difference in there, then we call that uh, cash over, uh, over or short, right? Cash over or short. And that means that you, had an error somewhere in your record keeping, uh, in giving change to somebody, whatever the case is, there's an error in the cash drawer. Hopefully it's not people taking money out of the cash drawer, right? And stealing it, uh, you know? And so if that happens very often, that's gonna be a problem, right? There is consequences for having problems with the cash drawer. There is one person that should have responsibility over the cash drawer and access to it. That's the person that needs to be on top of things and making sure it happens correctly. Um, there shouldn't be multiple people accessing the cash drawer. That's bad practice, right? If you need multiple people with cash, then you need to have multiple cash drawers. Uh, and so um, they shouldn't share is, is the best practice there because you need to have somebody accountable if there is a difference between what you have in the end and what you should have in the end, they're accountable for it, right? So, so anyway, so that difference is going to be our cash over and short. If we have more than we uh, say we should have, then that's over. We count that as revenue, kind of, right? Um, if we are short, then uh, we're going to have less than we say we should have, and then that's going to be treated as an expense. And I'll show you here on the next one how that works. Let's click on to our next one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the data that we had back on our petty cash report and we're gonna create um, the reimbursement to the petty cash fund. Okay, so the reimbursement to the petty cash fund. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna line up here on the debit side are basically all of our expenses. Expenses, right? So we're gonna have all these expenses with their debits lined up here so whatever the expenses are like for example we're going to go back here and we're going to see we're going to have delivery expense we're going to have mileage expense postage expense office supplies expense merchandise inventory is going to be our difference right that's not going to be expense that's going to be an asset but we we increase our inventory cost um with shipping so if we pay for shipping our inventory costs us more so we'll add that as well to our, our merchandise inventory will be also one of our debits. Merchandise inventory, there we go. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we'll have all these expenses lined out here. Our credit in, in this case, right? We would think, well, maybe we're gonna credit uh, petty cash or petty cash will be part of our reimbursement here. It is not. So that once you, the entries you make to petty cash are, one, establishing the petty cash like we did before. Two, uh, getting rid of the petty cash. So if you get rid of it altogether, that would be basically opposite of what we did before, right? We put our cash back in the bank account and we'd be done with it. Uh, or three, we're gonna do something here in a little while uh, where we increase or decrease the balance just a little bit. We still have a petty cash fund, but we increase or decrease the balance. We need more cash or less cash in there. Um, 
not reimbursing. Reimbursing, the credit here is going to be to cash because that's where the reimbursement comes from. So whatever your cash account number is here, whatever you're reimbursing, um, that's gonna be our credit. Uh, we could also credit cash over in short if we have more cash than we think we should, that'll be like a revenue, that'll be a credit. Uh, in our case here, I think you'll probably be short. So the cash over and short account will be, um, so our over short account will be, in this case, if we're short, it's gonna be a debit. It'll be like an expense. And so that that's gonna be something that you're gonna to need to put in there to make sure everything balances debit credit wise uh, to get the right cash. Uh, reimbursement that cash reimbursement is not going to be the same as the total down here right we're going to need to reimburse that total plus whatever we're short so we need to come up with extra from the cash over and short it'll be this amount at the bottom here plus whatever we're short and then that will be the amount we need to reimburse uh, on our reimbursement. So the, also, as we go on now, the next part, we're going to redo, okay? So you're gonna do this, uh, this entry right here, you're gonna do times two, right? So you're gonna do it again. You're gonna enter the exact same thing twice, uh, but the second time around, you are also going to enter in something, this right here, the increase in petty cash. Uh, so we want to increase it by 70 bucks. Um, we don't do, we're not going to use this 420. This 420 will be our ending balance. So if we think about it, we have petty cash here. Uh, this is a T account that shows the balance, right? So right now we have $350 in there. $350 in that balance, right? Well, that's how much we have in there. If we want it to be 420, we're going to have to add another 70 to it, which will give us a balance of 420, a $70 debit. So that's going to be what we're going to do. Petty cash. We want more cash. Let's say we almost ran out of cash last month. We're like, well, we need a little extra cushion on that petty cash. So let's put another $70 in there. So we got petty cash, an additional $70. Where does that come from? Well, it's gonna come out of our main cash account and that'll be an additional $70 coming from main, main cash into petty cash. So that's petty cash for you. Hopefully that helps you. You're gonna have to fill in a lot of that. I didn't tell you how to do necessarily everything. So you're still gonna have to make that reimbursement work. If you have any problems with it, feel free to contact me and I will, um, give you some additional support on that one, but that'll steer you in the right direction. Okay, so here we here we are. So we have a bunch of data, right, over on the left side here. We're gonna use this data to uh, create a bank reconciliation. So the, the main thing is we're gonna work here, uh, top to bottom. Usually it's good to maybe work from left to right on this one as well. That's usually the way we do it. So top to bottom, let's let's look and see the balances that we currently have in our bank and our book, right? Bank is what we usually get from our bank account, bank statement at the end of the period, at the end of the month. In this case, it's September 30. Now the book balance is gonna come out of our balance sheet. It's gonna be the balance that we have in our main cash account or the checking account. And so those are the two we're gonna, we're gonna use. So let's let's grab those here real quick. Uh, our checking account balance, where are we gonna find that? That one is, okay. So for our, our uh, checking balance, what we're gonna use here is we are going to use uh, for on the bank side, this is gonna be our number right at the bottom here. So that's gonna be, mine is gonna be 18,003. That's gonna be my number there at the bottom. And then for the checking, uh, this is the checking account information down here. So that's gonna be my number there. 
So it'll be uh, 16,784. So we can see that those are different, right? So the whole goal of this is to say, how are we gonna, what are the differences? We're gonna identify the differences. And then at the bottom, um, the adjusted bank balance and the adjusted book balance, they should be the same number. We're gonna try to make them the same number and then we have zero difference. That's when we reconcile, when those adjusted balances are zero, right? Or the, the difference between them is zero. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna look at the, and, and this is something important. So there, there are things that we can look at in, um, so the book has a nice layout in the presentation slides if you wanna bring them up for this chapter. It shows all of the adjusting items for the bank side and for the book side. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure you uh, know what type of items are going to be out there and, and what we add to and what we deduct. And so the, the, the bank side, let's start with that. So what we add to the bank is this. We're going to add on to the bank uh, items that we know about on our book side that the bank doesn't know about yet and that they would add if they knew about them. So for example, what is what adds to the cash balance of the bank? Well, it's going to be our deposits, right? And so we're going to look here um, on our deposit side right here. And we're going to say, OK, what items are outstanding or not accounted for up here in the bank statement? And those items that are outstanding need to end up on our reconciliation. So which which uh, deposits? Uh, so. One eight, uh, let's see, 1,182, got it here, we've got it here. Uh, 2,236, we're just checking these off, right? We're making sure that uh, everything matches here, here, 168. Oh, looks like we don't see that one. So that one right there is going to be something that we're going to need to uh, maybe put on our reconciliation. So that's going to be uh, our deposit. Oops. Uh, deposit. There we go. And so that deposit in transit is something we need to put there. Okay. Uh, for 1,668, right? So if there's anything else there, we need to look at that. Okay. Our deductions. So if the bank knows about, for example, a check, they're going to deduct it. So our checks are gonna be things that we're gonna adjust for. So this is gonna be, uh, let's see here. We look up here and we see up in this information, two checks outstanding right here, right? Two checks outstanding. So these are the items that we want to uh, double check on here to make sure that we're good. So let's check out 1,053. Oh, sure enough, there it is. So we're good. And then 493. Five. It looks like that one's not there yet. So that one would be there. Uh, so, and that's going to be check number 5893 for 495. Right. So we're going to check on there. And then we're also going to look here on all of our checks here. So 1876. Looks like we we're good there. And then we're just going to go down uh, 708 check check so that's what you're going to do for all this and you're going to find any of these that are outstanding and you're going to put them if they don't if they're not up in the bank statement they're going to end up here right so we're going to put them there as well okay and so then what we do is whatever our deposits we're going to add these to our beginning balance and then we're going to, whatever our balance is for these deductions on the checks, we're going to subtract these and we're going to come up with the, the adjusted balance there. Okay, so let's look, let's look now at our book balance. Our book balance is a little different, right? So these are things that the bank knows about that we don't know about until we get the bank statement or until the bank tells us. So, um, for example, things that we're, we would add are going to be payments into our account, 
that add to our cash account. We maybe not we we don't know about them until we get this um, until we get this bank statement. One of those items is going to be let's look here. It's going to be collection right here. So we collected a note. We earned interest. These items right here, right, are going to show up on the ad side. So this is going to be our note and our interest. So we're going to add those on there. Things that we would subtract are going to be things that we paid out or also things that maybe we um, didn't get that we thought we got. So this is one example up here. So there's an NSF check. That means not sufficient funds, right? A bounce check basically is what that is. And so here's our NSF check. It'll end up down there. Okay. And then we also have this other item going on um, down there. And so we have this difference in um, right here, additional information. Uh, right here, this little error down here. Okay. We've got an error uh, where we um, had a the, the check not the check happened correctly, but we entered into the entered it into our system incorrectly. So it was a book error. We did it wrong. The bank has it right. So that's going to be something that we can add in as well. And so we added it in. Uh, the check was bigger than what we entered in for our cash. So we're going to have to deduct a little bit more. So that's going to be the error correction here. We'll have to put that in. Okay. So again, uh, if the bank makes an error, we can put an error on the bank side. Uh, that's not part of this problem though. We don't have any bank errors. We just have book errors on here. So again, we're going to be adding these items in here. We're going to be subtracting this total here. And then we're going to have an adjusted amount. These two adjusted amounts, the difference should be zero, right? They should balance. They, that's going to be our reconciliation test there. And so hopefully everything reconciles and we're going to be looking good. The next thing we're going to be doing now is we're going to be doing journal entries. And uh, one thing to note is we do journal entries or adjusting entries for the, from the bank reconciliation. It's only going to be items that we find on the bank side. So this is where our, this is our, um, our adjusting entries are gonna come from is the bank side, not the book side. We're not gonna be doing anything from the, I mean, from the bank side, sorry. They're all gonna be, our, uh, that is, I don't know why I wrote bank there. Our adjusting entries are all gonna come from the book side, okay. <laughs> So the bank stuff that's off, deposits, checks, any of those items, there's not going to be any entries there that we're going to do. So we're going to do it all on the book side. Okay, so that's what this looks like. So we're going to have six items. Um, some of these items, just to note, some of these items are not going to have any entries. So that you're going to put down here, no entry required. Uh, those are going to be for the bank items. Right, so any checks outstanding, any deposits um, outstanding as well, those are gonna be no entry required, only the items that come from the book side of things. Uh, the trickiest one, one of the trickiest ones anyways, is this error down here on the bottom. So the error down here on the bottom is a little tricky. One thing to note is it lines out the journal entry for you almost perfectly down here. So it's going to say, for example, the record keeper misread the amount, right? With it records a debit to computer equipment and a credit to cash. So those are your accounts, right? Cash is going to be one. Computer equipment is going to be the other one. Okay. Which one do you debit? Which one do you credit? I'll let you uh, kind of play with that and hopefully it makes sense to you. It's really, in the end, it's how it impacts cash, right? So we need to have less cash 
So you're going to be reducing cash even more than you have. That way it matches up with the uh, what it's supposed to be on the bank side. So I'll let you do that one. Hopefully this helped. Uh, you know, I really enjoy these um, these bank reconciliations and everything that we do. This chapter, I think, is a pretty fun one. Super applicable. Uh, it's applied accounting. You're going to need to do this and understand the cash items, whether you're, uh, you know, starting out doing just basic bookkeeping or if you're doing more advanced stuff like, like uh, controller type stuff, CFO type stuff for a company, you're going to need to have uh, a pretty good control of how cash works. So hopefully this gives you an intro into that. Have a good one. Again, contact me if you need any help. Thanks. Bye.